<laughs> Welcome to the Fusion Ministry Children's Ministry Podcast. My name is Brent Colby. I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. Today we are talking about Sunday security. Today's episode is also, as always, not brought to you by Blue Diamond Almonds. So good. So good. Love to eat them, as long as they're whole natural. Steven, let's get started today. Sunday security. Now, maybe we shouldn't get started. Steven? Yes? I have something awesome for you today. Oh, good. Uh, I love board games. I'm somewhat of a board game aficionado. My wife would call me a geek. Uh, at best, but there's a game that just came out I'm really excited about. Okay. I just got it, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Sorry. But it is definitely something awesome. The game is called Captain Sonar. I have a picture oh, for you uh, right here. Gotcha, he looks like he's underwater. He is underwater, he's in a submarine. Okay. In fact, there are two teams, each team plays as their own submarine, and it's like a one-on-one -on -one I think I've played this game, Battleship? battleship right? Yeah, well it's like Battleship, except you are in a sub with four, uh, four three other players. There's four people okay. in one sub, and you have to work together to move your sub around the map, shoot torpedoes, drop bombs, and you're looking for and trying to sink the other sub in Got this it. game, Got real it. time. So it looks pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah, so uh, you can see some of the artwork, some of the stuff. The interesting thing, though, is there's a captain at one end, and he has to kind of shout commands down the line to his crew, mm -hmm. and they have to execute and tell him whether or not they can do what he wants them to do. Couldn't the other team hear your commands? They can, and they're listening. One of the person's role on the other team is to listen to the other team's captain and try to figure out, based on the commands, where they're at on the map. So I'm yelling at my team. They're yelling at their team. We're trying to figure out where the other person's <laughs> at. It's pretty... They basically made a game based off of the movie The Hunt for Red October. That's basically it. Got which it. Which makes it something awesome. Got it. And you're Sean Connery. Obviously, Sean Connery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started for real this time. Talking about Sunday security. Yes. Kind uh, of a big deal. Yeah. You know, I was... Um, when I started at my first church in children's ministries, we had no security, nothing. <laughs> I mean, there was literally nothing. It was drop different the kids time. off. Yeah, different. It was just simple. And then I remember yeah. moving to my first big church, right? Large right, big church. church. Yeah, yeah. We had laminated tags for every kid. Nice. And we had a huge board. Every kid who ever visited our church had yeah. their own slot on this board. Wow. It was alphabetized and re-alphabetized every single week. And we would pull out the tags, give one physical ticket to the thing, put the ticket on the kid, and it was just like that every week. And it was elaborate, to say the least. Yeah, wow. But um, Probably the, more effective than some, some systems that are out there today, <laughs> it was, actually. It was better than nothing. Actually, yeah. it worked fine. Yeah. It was just labor intensive. Sure. But that was my first exposure to like sure. security with kids yeah, at church yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're wearing these tags now. We went and printed yes. these out. We've got uh, our names and then a three-digit code yep. on them. And uh, now I think, you know, kind of similar, we've got these things that then the parents get and they match up the codes yeah. to the name tag. What, uh, what program are you guys using? This is Fellowship One. Fellowship One, one Fellowship of the popular one. ones. One of the popular ones. Um, church teams will do it too, which it, they're, they're also great. Um, but I mean, kind of going back to the way, I mean, the system that you talked about is a great one. A really cheap option if you're like, hey, we don't have a church database and F1 yeah, is expensive. You can get the wristbands, the different colored wristbands for like 500 for six bucks. And they actually have a six digit code on the wristband that yeah. you can tear off. Then you put the wristband on, the wristband has the code and then the parent gets a code and they go yeah. back and then you check them that way. Yeah, yeah, we've done that too. Uh, that's our backup system. Oh, if, that's good. If our if our if our electronic system goes down, which that, it has happened, thank and that's you, super cheap, easy, so cheap, accomplishes yeah. the same thing. Exactly. Yep. You know, when I think of security, I think of all the things that you can do, and it's like one of those things where there's you could not stop securing your right. ministry. Right. Yeah. You can take it over the top. Like you want to prepare for everything that you can and make sure that children are safe, but you can also not do any other work in ministry except for try to make things, you know, yeah. over the top so safe. I think finding the sweet spot's important, but one of the things you have to do is background checks. Yeah, it's that's like, a that's It's a, a no duh, duh yeah. but you have to do it. And make no excuses for people who, well, I'll get my paperwork in next week, or 
um, oh, this guy's on staff. We don't need to worry about it. Everybody needs a background check. You are spend opening yourself up for such a giant lawsuit by yeah. not running a background check and having that person in a room with children. What's one of your uh, must-haves for security where you guys are at? Uh, we do for for these pickup tags. We do we say something every tag, every child, every time. So something that's really easy to do is get uh, like oh. I've known this person for 10 years. I watched their kid get born. I know that this child belongs to this parent. Yeah. Have you, hold up, have you actually watched someone's kid get no, born? No, no. It'd be a very personal. No, I didn't even watch it in eighth grade health. <laughs> Someone else's kid getting born. Okay, quick story. Yeah. Oh man. I'm in a life psychology yeah. class and the teacher is playing this video and it's a picture of a live birth. But it's not like, it's like, it's like front and center picture of a live birth, as wow. awkward as you could possibly imagine <laughs> yeah. it. So the teacher hits play on the cassette videotape, because of course that's how he, uh, he was rolling, it was a he, and it starts the second the baby comes out. It was horrible. So it hits play. We're not prepared for this, right? Usually you have some buildup. You can prepare your heart for this moment. I'm it not was prepared just, for this. Talking it was about from it. zero <laughs> to birth like that. Well, this was not where the video start, started. So the professor goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And we're like, yeah, you're sorry. That's not okay. Yeah. He says, we're, we need to start the video at the beginning. So then he hits rewind. So we oh, see. Oh, you have to see it again. <laughs> we have to see. For all like, of you kids, you don't know fat. what rewind is. <laughs> so, it's this like really old school invention that brought our tapes back to the beginning. So I'm wiping my eyes with the tears. And all I see is this baby being rocked by its mom really fast. This doctor takes the baby, steals the baby oh. from the mom, wipes guck all over it, and then just takes the baby <laughs> and places it okay. right back all inside right. the mother. No, all then right. we rewind the beginning of the tape, and then he hits play. So now for a third time, the whole class has to wait five minutes for this moment to happen again. We were laughing, we were crying, most of us were crying. Uh, yeah, I don't oh. know what I would have done. I probably would have been like, I'm out. <laughs> Peace. So that's great. Peace. So yeah, so some kids you've known for a long time and uh, you're close to. So even if you watch that happen, a first time guest doesn't know that you know this family that well. And if you neglect to check the tag on a kid, that first time guest or someone who doesn't know that is gonna see that and go, this system is a sham. They don't really care. I'm giving my most precious thing in the entire world into the hands of these people I don't know very well, expecting them to take care of them and watch them and teach them something, and I just watch their another child get picked up without a tag. Right, yeah, yeah. deal breaker. Yeah. The other thing I've seen a lot is people will have great systems. They'll pay a lot of money, um, they'll spend a lot of work, yeah. and then they'll get their people kind of plugged in. But what they don't do is train their volunteers. They won't <laughs> yeah. use the system. Like you said, that laminated tag system, that would work perfectly fine for your church. And if you're on a budget where you can't you know, get the computers and the kiosks and all the stuff to it's, set that's that That's expensive stuff. Like yeah. the printers for, for, for this system are over $300 a printer. That's crazy. Like it's, it's expensive, guys. Um, but just good team training. Yeah. You could have all that and have your system be not nearly as secure as a system with just pieces of paper and tags oh, yeah. with even handwritten whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So training your team, I think, is the biggest thing, regardless of how cool of yeah. gear you have. And then something that's really big and it's been on my heart, especially for this time, is children who are um, from a in a home where they're being protected against a parent or someone who is coming yeah. after them. We call these uh, children mighty warriors and they have a special thing on their tag so that we can actually identify them. And the volunteers know that if a mighty warrior gets checked in, we have to check the ID of the um, person who's picking them up because they very possibly could have a parent who comes in who is their parent and say, hey, I'm here to pick up this kid. And that parent could actually be trying to like kidnap their kid. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. So I just had something in my eye. Right. So we have to <laughs> check the ID plan. that we have on hand against the ID that we have um, like in our system of this is the appropriate person who can pick them up because the last thing you want to do is have someone go, oh yeah, this is mom or dad, and mom comes in and oh yeah, it is mom, and then you find out that there's a custody battle going on. Yeah. And you just handed a kid off to the wrong parent. Oh who's now like fleeing the state. We we had that exact scenario. It was a, a kid that had been taken out of the custody of their parents, mm. put into foster care, mm. and the foster family and the parent came and visited and they 
the child and the parent found each other. And of course, the kid wants to be with the parent. Yeah. And it was it was exactly that. It fell down to the effectiveness Guys, of the system. Guys, if you think it won't happen to you, it's not true. It absolutely could. It's real, and you got to watch out for it, and you got to have a system in place. These things these things are real. Yeah. We'd love to hear what your security essentials are. Like, what is it? What's the main thing you guys do? Put an emphasis on. Again, we're just scratching the surface here of all that we could talk about, but it's something that if you haven't discussed with your team or your lead or your lead pastor, you yeah, need to and dig we can into put it. down some of the places that we use for background checks. Like yeah. a background check that we go through is only seven dollars a background check. That's much cheaper than a potential lawsuit against someone that you didn't, you know, like, oh, it's so expensive. I mean, we have ones that are 10 minutes, they only take 10 minutes to run. So if so you say if you have a parent who wants to sit with their kid and we go, well, we got to get a background check on, so we can run this 10 minute background check even, and then they can sit there and we say, hey, you know, you can sit with your child, but you can't, you know, interact with the other kids and stuff, yeah. so. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, but yeah, tell us what you guys are using. We'd love to see it. Maybe showcase some of the really cool systems that are out there. Say, yeah. hey, look at this church. They've got it dialed in. Like, we can uh, see that and we can all learn some stuff, so. Yeah. Steven, before I let you go, okay. I'd like to play a game real quick. Yeah, let's play a game. Um, this game is called- Let's play a game. <clears throat> Winston Churchill or Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> now, I'm gonna read you a quote and you have to tell me if the quote is from Winston Churchill Famous Prime Minister of Yeah, one of the greatest England. leaders probably of all time. Yeah, during World War II. Or Lindsay Lohan, better can't, known for... Can't believe we're even bringing her up. Quote number one. <clears throat> it is this. Life is full of risks anyway. Why not take them? Uh, life is full of risks anyway. Why? That's got to be Lindsay Lohan. Uh, Lindsay Lohan yeah. is correct. Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, question number two. Okay. <clears throat> Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill. Okay, Winston Churchill, yeah. that's good. Okay. <clears throat> that was eloquent. That was eloquent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, question number three, quote number three okay. is this. <clears throat> Megalomania is the only form of sanity. I don't know, Lindsay. Nope, that was Winston Churchill. Okay. Winston Churchill. Megalomania, that's far too many syllables. Yeah, that's, that's a big word. <laughs> I can't believe I gave that one to Lindsay. That was a big, big word. Sorry, Lindsay, if you're watching, but. Last quote before we go is this. This is tricky. Okay. I'm not skinny for the wrong reasons. It's because, it's not because I'm bulimic or anorexic or doing drugs. Compared to a lot of actresses my age, I'm actually overweight. Definitely Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill, right? Churchill yeah. correct. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> we'll see you next week, and we look forward to catching you soon. See you guys.